everyone, and welcome back to What's the Plan, the podcast where we dive into the matters of our careers in the architecture and urban planning field. I'm Haley. And I'm Andrea. So Haley, what's the plan this week? Today's plan is all about 15-minute cities. Now, before we get into it, 15-minute cities and 15-minute neighborhoods are often used interchangeably, so we might be doing that as well throughout the episode. So Haley, what's a 15-minute city? So the concept of a 15-minute city is based on the idea that residents can access all basic necessities within a 15-minute radius on foot or by bike. This concept advocates for compact cities with mixed-use development, which supports greater connectivity and places a strong emphasis on active transportation as the main mode of transportation. The overarching goal for implementing 15-minute cities is creating more inclusive and accessible space. This is generally done by cutting down on unnecessary travel, reducing the dependency on cars, and ideally, it'll improve living conditions and environment and increase resident health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a 15-minute city is not necessarily a new planning concept, uh, but rather it is based on core principles derived from old history of designing cities around people. So... It's based on the idea of a segment of city that was first suggested by Carlos Moreno, who is a Paris-based researcher and professor. And he was actually inspired by author and activist Jane Jacobs in her living city concept, where is a neighborhood is not only an association of buildings, but also a network of social relationships. And in this environment, like feelings and sympathy can flourish. Um, for Moreno, 15 minutes is all about hyper proximity and also chrono urbanism. And he's aware that it is quite ambitious urban policy that will require a radical transformation of our lifestyles, not only like the built environment, but it is in- crucial for the betterment of our urban pace of life. So to do so, we must go from highly monofunctional uh, zones with the city, central city and its very special areas into a more polycentric city. So based on like four major components of proximity, diversity, density, and ubiquity, and also six city functions, which are living, working, supplying, caring, learning, enjoying, and um, finding a fulfillment in life. Similar versions of 30-minute and 20-minute neighborhoods have also emerged in the past decade, notably in Australia. With that being said, the 15-minute city is gaining a lot of traction in the planning community and city policies as many politicians are running campaigns with the promise of implementing such ideas. So a prime example of this is in Paris, where Mayor Anne Hidalgo have unveiled in her re-election campaign last January um, a city of 15 minutes. Uh, the plans aim to transform Paris into a people-friendly city and is actually built on Hidalgo's plan velo from her uh, campaign during the first term of office, which has included removing spaces for cars and boosting si- uh, space for cyclists and pedestrians. And some of these features include turning currently traffic-choked intersections into pedestrian plazas, as well as creating green space, vegetable plots, and playgrounds in lieu of car parks. And in a Canadian context, the city of Ottawa has implemented the goal of supporting a 15-minute city in their new official plan back in 2019. The goal is to grow within established communities and evolve them into walkable 15-minute cities using a diverse mix of land uses, including a range of housing, shops, services, local access to food, schools, employment, green spaces, and pathways. Essentially, the goal is to create spaces for the local community to come together and be more physically active. So before we dive into what the experts are saying about this concept, what do you personally think of it? Um, yeah, so when I first heard about the 15-minute city concept, I thought it was such a great concept. I thought, wow, why isn't this everywhere? I just think the general idea of having that big of an emphasis on accessibility is fantastic. The fact that you can walk 15 minutes and get everything you might need on a daily basis is amazing. And it reduces our overall carbon footprint because it eliminates the need for using cars to get whatever we need, especially when it might just be a small thing. Best of all, I think it improves the sense of community, inclusivity, and it boosts social cohesion. But with that being said, I think that there are many facets to consider before implementation. The way I see it is kind of like a pyramid. I think that the implementation of a 15-minute city would be kind of like the upper portion of a pyramid, and before we get to establish the upper portion, we first need to build a foundation. And I think these foundations, specifically within a North American context, just isn't quite there yet. 
And so the idea of having the implementation of 15-minute cities are more of an ideal than a reality as of now. But for now, a solid foundation needs to be the main focus before we go further and begin and begin planning for 15-minute cities. What about you? At first glance, I also agree with the idea that like the 15-minute concept is a very like top-down approach. And there is a lot that we need to do before we can actually start figure out ways to implement it into the like North American context. Um, but like for initial reaction, I totally love it. I've always had held the belief that time is invaluable and time can afford and provide us with a lot of things that money cannot. And unlike money, it cannot be earned back. Therefore, I'm always more like more than willing to spend a lot extra to make the most of it. And like just a personal story, as you and many are like our high school friends, we know dating back to when our parents would let us go downtown by ourselves. I've always been a strong advocate for taking the 40 minute go train ride downtown rather than taking a two hour bus and subway commute, even though it would save us like four dollars. Because what you don't realize is that like that hour that you take to commute one way, you could be spending that time elsewhere and it could be a lot better spent. Whether that is like, that's an hour of extra sleep, an hour extra reading, an hour extra with your family. So with that being said, every and every minute reduced from the commute of your daily activities is a yes for me. And given the fact that there are like walking commutes is even a bigger yes for me. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think that for those who have the luxury of being able to spend money over time, it's great. But this also gives an opportunity for those to be able to save their time without additional costs that they might not have. Now, let's get into some critiques that experts have about this concept. Yeah, so overall, the general consensus regarding the idea of a 15-minute city is quite positive. However, most of its critiques from the planning community lies in the actual attainability and the implications of actually implementing it. Yeah, especially with COVID-19 being such a prominent issue right now, a lot of cities have suggested implementing 15-minute neighborhoods specifically within Europe as a means to cut down public transit usage and distance travel. But when you think about the built form in Europe and the built form in North America, it's not really the easiest concept to translate over to this part of the world. North American cities generally weren't created with the same principles as European cities were, but rather they're more car-oriented, which is the opposite of foundations for a 15-minute city. Yeah, so North America compared to Europe is much more heavily suburban. With that, restoring the built environment to meet this goal of like being able to allow for people to walk everywhere is quite difficult, especially where there are suburban regions or areas where there's a lot of in-city highways, there's a lot of uh, disinvestment, or just in general, a loss of population. It just makes this overall much more difficult to do. Mm-hmm. And within the context of COVID-19, as we mentioned, the implementation of 15-minute cities means intentionally reducing the dependency on cars. This means that there will be more space allowance for walking, which would help with social distancing mandates. But again, a lot of research and assessment has to go into the logistics of implementing 15-minute cities successfully in the North American context. Yeah, so another thing as well as like doing enough thorough research is that we need to be wary about what the necessities are within this 15 minute city. So it's like we need to understand what the, le- the list of needs and desires to provide it within this area. We also have to be wary about the size of this area um, because it is the 15 minute cities indicated through actually a time traveling rather than actual like square footage or kilometer. And also we have to be wary of what is the average housing density because this might not work in a single detached area. So what is the density? Should it be high rises? Should it be more so mid rises? And that would also help determine the population within this area and also what support services are needed. And that also brings into the question of where centralized services fit in. For example, city halls, entertainment complexes, and hospitals, because these types of services can't exist in every single 15-minute city. So how are you going to choose one 15-minute city to prioritize to have these services in over another? And one final criticism is that no matter how great the concept is, you'll always run into issues with either pedestrian shadows or pockets of lower walkability especially in border areas and where shadows are created from large building masses. So city planners can always step in and help with reducing building shadows and breaking up building facades. However, some experts have noticed that like areas of less pedestrians are not necessarily bad. 
So it's like just because there's less people walking there doesn't mean that's actually a problem in this area. Rather, they can actually provide opportunity for lower rents or businesses that don't necessarily require a storefront presence. And just tying in with the point before about density, at the end of the day, the quality of the walk is just important as the ability to walk. So we just, we have to be conscious of what we're putting in the 15 minute city. Another thing that like recently actually come about is until earlier this week, I haven't read any major oppositions to the 15 minute city. However, earlier on Wednesday at Bloomberg City Lab 2021 conference, uh, Jay Pitter, who is an award-winning placemaker, uh, whose practice mitigates growing divides in cities across North America, and who's actually based in Toronto, uh, she stated that transplanting the 15 minute city template across Atlantic could be quite presumptive and colonial. So what are your thoughts about that? Because personally, I never thought of it like that. Yeah, that's actually really interesting because I would have never thought about it that way or even used the words presumptive or colonial. But after seeing the article, I can definitely see where she comes from, which is really insightful because it just goes to show that with every idea or concept, there are multiple perspectives. And just because we have one specific perspective, it doesn't mean that everyone else shares the same opinions. I think it's also really eye-opening to see such a highly esteemed figure have such a different viewpoint than what's normally portrayed. Mm -hmm. I guess like the point that she was addressing is like there is an intersectionality of how neighborhoods are created, especially in North America, where planning doesn't happen necessarily randomly. There's quite there's quite a lot of segregated communities where there's a specific race that is dominant. So therefore, we must be careful that when we're thinking about these planning ideas, we're not just also gentrifying the area, but also reducing their culture. Given that this was from like a brief uh, part of her much larger talk, it'd be interesting to see her release a, a much more detailed article in the future of what her reasonings and then backing up her critique. So now that we have addressed some of the flaws of the concept, do you have any suggestions or have you found any suggestions that could resolve the issues we have mentioned? Yeah, for sure. I just want to say that I agree with the critiques in terms of locational possibility. Throughout this episode, we've said many times that we think that the 15-minute city concept is a great idea, but it doesn't necessarily translate well everywhere. Additionally, if the 15-minute neighborhood is successfully implemented throughout various locations, as Jay Pitter mentioned, it could result in an increase of segregation within the various neighborhoods and communities, which is also a really big issue that needs to be thought about. So with these critiques in mind, I do think that the greatest suggestion I have is just to reiterate what we've been saying and to just have a greater emphasis on the research, the policies, and everything we need to have a strong foundation before implementing 15-minute cities. But I'm sure you found a few suggestions to help improve this. Let's hear them. Yeah, I definitely agree in the sense that like there might be segregation, so... We shouldn't only think of 15 minute city as like one specific area, but rather we should think of them as several 15 minute cities within the actual city itself. So Toronto could potentially have like very like 20 various 15 minute cities. And that kind of goes into the point that to like to combat some of the concerns that we've mentioned about what should be in each of the cities, the sizing and the housing density. I um, actually found a suggestion from New Urbanist that suggests that these 15-minute cities should be compromised of several five-minute walk neighborhoods nested together. So sort of like the idea before you suggested of a pyramid or a tiered effect, how there's several different layers to the 15-minute city. So the first tier is actually a five-minute walk, and this is more so your individual neighborhood, and it's more made up of ordinarily daily needs, ranging from housing, different housing types and a public square or a main street with some small mixed-use businesses, um, mostly food, restaurants, to mostly prevent like food deserts. And then the second ring would be your 15-minute walk, and this should be a, a mix of uses from including a grocery store, a pharmacy, general merchandise, and public schools, as well as a large park that and large employers that not only serves your little five-minute walk area, but also multiple five-minute walk areas, and then as well access to regional transportation. And then the large, the last uh, tier is your 15-minute bicycle ride. So giving access to major cultural, medical, and higher educational facilities, so your centralized services, and as well as regional parks and major employers that can be found here. Um, this would also service 
the multiple five minute walk neighborhoods as well the 15 minute walk uh, tiers and as well access to intercity transportations. I think the most crucial part to actually implementing the 15 minute city idea is actual consultations with people that live in the area. So talking with people about what they want, what they need, and also their concerns, because at the end of the day, we're building this for the people that live there. So we can't just have like a single like one mind, one goal, one like plant for the whole world. Rather, like we take what we know, the core principles of the idea of like of being able to walk, be able to bike, what we need, but also adding the individual characters of the neighborhood into it. Yeah, definitely. I think with all that being said, we can definitely say we both agree that the 15 minute city concept is a great idea. But for this model to be successful, there needs to be a lot of policy planning throughout all levels of government, public consultations, stakeholder meetings, community engagements, and more must be put at the forefront in planning for successful 15 minute cities. If any of you listening have any thoughts on this concept, please share them with us. We're always eager to learn about different viewpoints, and our goal for this podcast is to be able to form a community of thoughts, ideas, or questions about related topics and just to figure things out. With that being said, that's the plan for now. Listen to the next episode to continue figuring it out with us. And thank you for following along to this episode. If you liked it, please give it a like, review, and subscribe for more. And until then, follow us on Instagram at What's the Plan Podcast for what the next plan is.